Hey everyone! Welcome to my channel. If you don't already know me, my name is Irit and I do scrapbooking and mixed media. I've been doing a lot of art journaling lately and I'm really excited to participate in this challenge. Uh, the lovely Allie Brown came up with the concept. Uh, she's amazing. I love her uh, channel and I was really excited to join the challenge. So the way it works, it's called Honey Slim Pickens and you <laughs> allow someone <laughs> to come into your space <laughs> and choose five um, products for you to art journal with or you know, do whatever you want with, um, plan with, scrapbook with, I don't know. I think it's um, mostly for art journaling. But, and when I say someone, it can be, well, anyone, your significant other, um, one of your kids, your best friend, um, whoever you want. I thought about <laughs> what I maybe should have done is uh, let my daughter pick because her favorite color is magenta and I do like magenta but I decided to let my husband pick it and first of all he <laughs> came into my space that's already a cause of agitation um, he's not the messy hoarder type person that I am so um, yeah I don't think he feels as comfortable in my mess as I do. <laughs> and also for some reason he really enjoyed the um, the cruel aspect, as I like to call it, of this challenge, um, which is picking things that will be difficult for me to use. <laughs> anyway, as he says, uh, he chose the best colors. So <laughs> show you what he picked and what I had to work with. Um, Start with the good, the bad, or the ugly. <laughs> no offense to any art supply. So he chose Distress Ink. The color is Shaded Lilac. And it's a really pretty color. He chose this stamp. He chose, this was, this was a good choice, um, this spray, so this is, focus, camera focus, so this is Shimmer's Colorings in, I don't know, it's kind of, it's like a teal color, it's called, well, Blew Me Down, it's actually one of my favorites, so that's good, and he chose this <laughs> sorry <laughs> so this is Liquitex heavy body uh, paint in deep violet it's a lovely color but I don't use a lot of dark colors or let's say I find them more challenging to use so I was a little bit a little bit worried there and then the final blow the knockout punch <laughs> This is the Dilutions Squeezed Orange Paint and I think maybe this is the reason that, you know, you should really, 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 really buy only stuff you like and um, this is just very, very orange and yeah, it was challenging. So <laughs> I filmed my process and I will also show you my first failed attempt that um, I'm sorry, there are just doves suddenly walking around today. I've never seen in the years uh, that we've lived here, I've never had so many doves flying around outside my room. Uh, that's why I keep looking there, sorry. So <laughs> I filmed my uh, first failed attempt, um, which I, I decided that I can also use white paint um, because it's like such a basic thing and I was a bit freaked out by this orange and this super dark color. It's a very beautiful color 
you can see it's very beautiful but very 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 dark and my husband walked in on me using the white and he was like uh 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 i did not give you white paint you can't do that and i was like yes i can um but i decided to kind of um go about it in a different strategy and i will explain my process uh, as I create. I'm doing this because you will be watching from above, <laughs> uh, you know, on my table there, my messiness. And yeah, so I'm excited to show you what I came up with. Um, you can get a glimpse at the, probably you saw at the thumbnail of this video, but it was a lot of fun, quite a challenge, and I am happy with what I came up with though though so thank you so much <laughs> for uh, watching this and I hope you will also participate in the challenge um, it is a bit scary to let someone you know touch your stuff but <laughs> I survived I live to tell so you can do it too <laughs> bye Hey there, so this was me trying to get over the shock of having these <laughs> products to work with and kind of trying to get familiarized with these colors. So I wanted to gesso my uh, pages. I'm working in the Large Dilutions Journal, which is fantastic uh, for several reasons. It's, uh, I love the size of it and it has some really nice mixed media paper. It's less uh, suitable for watercolor in my opinion. For when I use watercolors, I uh, usually don't use this journal. I use either my Jane Davenport one or the watercolor paper in my new um, Dina Wakely one. But for paint, uh, I think this one is fantastic and it has a lot of uh, pages in it and yeah it's just and it's really great value that that's the final point that you can find it on Amazon also Amazon Germany and it's really really great value and it will last you a long time because it's so uh, full of uh, pages so I am putting, I put way too much gesso and slowly I will learn the exact amount that I need to squeeze out uh, for one uh, spread. But um, I want to prep my page anyway because I mostly have here paints and they just work better on gesso. So I thought I would just add a few of them or all of them to my um spread and see kind of what they look like. I I use the um, the shimmers uh, spray quite a lot but the other ones are not um, well the ink is more straightforward but uh, I'm I haven't used these paints so much so I don't know exactly you know what kind of shades I get uh, if I mix them with white and you know just how they behave so i'm just trying to get that excess uh, excess gesso off my page and i'm just uh, i grabbed another journal this one i'm working on is um i guess mostly full it's most of the pages are really really ugly and <laughs> i think it was my first art journal um, I think it was just a place to put some paint and not really think about anything and it just didn't it apparently that doesn't give you great results <laughs> so anyway uh, I was playing around with the spray the gesso the colors and everything and I really had no direction no plan um, just trying to get familiarized with the stuff I have to work with. Since it's paint, I was kind of in the, you know, worst case I'll cover it up um, type of mood and mode. So I didn't really 
as I said, I, I didn't really think too much about it. And maybe that was one of my mistakes. So here I'm trying to mix the, <laughs> the deep violet uh, Liquitex paint with white. And you can see that you get really lovely colors. The paint itself also without white is a beautiful, beautiful color, very deep, deep and rich. But when you add white to it, you get a whole range of colors. So I am playing along, spreading paint on. One of the reasons that um, I use paint less as I would like to is because I hate washing brushes. But uh, in this case, you'll see me pull out a brush also for my acrylic paint. I have no problem of using brushes with watercolor. I don't know, it's just a bit cleaner because everything is so, you know, water soluble and not permanent. But yeah, with paint, it's not like that. So I'm using this silicone um, brush type of thing that I really like because you don't have to wash it <laughs> and you can't really destroy it. So that's the type of tools that work for me. And I think at this point, my husband came in and was like, I didn't allow white paint. And ooh, look at that pretty texture. Uh, that's a good way of getting texture to close the page um, and open it fast while everything is still wet. So that was him telling me, no, 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 you can't do that. So here I am starting again. And this time I'll just prep my page with gesso without anything else. Um, yes, I allowed myself to use gesso uh, just because it makes, you know, applying everything else um, easier. And just the paint looks better on gesso, moves better on gesso. So that's why I decided to do this. And I'm going to let everything dry completely before I move on. And at this point I was like, okay, I have these colors to work with. I think I need to kind of make them into some objects that don't take up the entire space because it's like strong, dark colors. I need to have a lot of white space. And then I thought, okay, I'll make some sort of a flower abstract type of thing. And the first thing I tried, which I really love, as you can see here, I just turned my Distress Ink um, ink pad right on my paper. And look how pretty those uh, abstract flowers are. I love them. Um, I'm really excited to try it again. It's almost like, you know, too easy to <laughs> to use. It's just not right. So just kidding. Uh, it was a really uh, happy discovery. And uh, I'm sure I will do this again because I love painting flowers. I'm not very good at it, but I really enjoy it. <laughs> so now I'm moving on to the next uh, item in my uh, product list here. So I decided to use that uh, deep violet and just make some sketchy flowers. So this will be kind of a loose... I don't know, I guess a bouquet or a part of the bouquet. It's it's kind of very loose, uh, almost abstract. I mean, you can tell it's flowers, hopefully, but uh, there's not a lot of realism or detail here. I kept it very uh, light uh, because of those strong colors I had to work with. So I'm using just a round brush. It's a really cheap set I got from Amazon that came with, I don't know, 10 brushes or something of every size from two till 20, I think. So two, four, six, eight, ten, 10, and so on. And I don't invest in my acrylic paint brushes because I treat them horribly and, um, you know, I don't wash them properly. And if you don't wash paint properly, then it just stays and dries and ruins your brushes. So <laughs> I'd rather have cheap brushes, but I, I try to take care of them. In this case, I was um, adding a lot of water also to it. So I, I, I think the brush <laughs> survived <laughs> this. <laughs> so just adding a few details to the 
um, those lilac flowers that I created with, with the Distress ink. And now I have my little turquoise um, shimmers spray and you see it's a beautiful color. It's some sort of teal, I guess I would call it. And I thought I would also stamp it. Obviously you can use um, paint with your stamps and I could have used also the Distress ink because, you know, that's I think that the original purpose of those ink pads is to use it for stamping but um, I didn't <laughs> so <laughs> I just dipped it in the mist as you can see and it actually looks really beautiful when it dries on the gessoed surface uh, I think it would probably look nice also on um, ungessoed surface but um, somehow the this mist it just you know it creates these beautiful water stains when you use it on gesso it soaks less into the paper because of the gesso and it just looks beautiful you can see it more close up in the close-up shots at the end and i thought that this was also a fitting color for um you know the stalks and some sort of leaves I could have added to it a little bit of the orange and that probably would have given me a very, very muted uh, green or brown because, um, well, blue and orange are complementary colors, so together they make a neutral, but this is more of a greenish blue, so uh, maybe I should try to mix them just for the sake of experiment. I. I think I would have gotten a very, very neutral greenish color, but I love the the teal color. I love the spray color as it is, and obviously I don't care too much about realism here, um, but it's actually a close enough color for, you know, leaves and stalks. So that's why I chose it for that purpose. Um, adding some more water stains or mist stains with the packaging technique we could, which is just you spray onto some packaging and then use the packaging to apply that um, spray or watercolor you can use also to your project. So now it's time for the orange and honestly I really didn't want to add the orange as it is. I just didn't feel it was working with the whole feel. I had this very soft, um, you know, floral, light, airy thing going on and that orange was just not the right color. So I tried to mix it a little bit with that violet and it actually created a really beautiful uh, muted color. But um, yeah, I added a few of these dots um, it was kind of, it, here it was a little bit kind of forcing myself to use that instead of making something that I really thought was needed and pretty. So what I decided to do is just add a lot of water to that orange and add kind of these water stains um, around my flowers just for that pop of color and definition. And the last thing I did that is not on video is that I used the same uh, teal spray ink from Shimmers that I used to stamp and paint the stalks and leaves with um, like a nib pen, I guess they're called. And I added some journaling with that. Uh, I think it shows in the close-up shots. And I also added, I stamped the date. Uh, just so I know when I made this. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out the other ladies who are participating in this cha challenge. Um, yeah, thanks so much for watching. Have a lovely day. Bye.